What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. This is going to be a very quick intro because I am rushing to Hustler right now. I had some delays at the bank. This piece of paper represents my buy-in for today, playing 5-5-100. Five, five, and uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm buying in for a decent chunk. I don't know how much yet, to be honest, but this piece of paper represents how much money I have with me. And uh, I gotta convert that into some chips and sit down at the table because the live stream has already started and I'm a tad bit late, unfortunately. So what happens when you keep buying into big games, gotta have, uh, gotta have everything figured out. But um, yeah, gonna hop in, hope you enjoy another high stakes live stream cash game in LA. You guys always love that. And there's gonna be tons of action. So let's get there. Let's just uh, play some hands down. We're back at Hustler with a $50,000 buy-in and one of the first interesting hands we get started off with the $200 straddle on. Action starts with the early position player raising to 600 plus two makes the call and we get action. The cutoff three bets to 2200 and I'm in the big blind and peel pocket kings. Wow. Welcome to the session, everyone, with so much action and being out of position of it all. I'm definitely going to be sizing up with a four bets, and yeah, this is just a foreshadowing of all the action to start on this stream. I put in another raise here to $5,000, and you see the early position original opener folding, then Kennedy somehow makes an insanely good fold with Jax. He must have some sort of soul read, but action onto the three better Eli in the cutoff, he makes the call. We're going to a flop in a pot building already here. Flop comes queen, three deuce. All things considered, pretty good flop, although I do lose to pocket queens, which is certainly a holding he may have. But given Eli's stack, considering the size of the pot already, I start off with a small one of 1700 And for this very small price, this gets Eli to peel one. So we get to see a turn, which comes a jack. Another card I hate seeing from my perspective. Luckily, good for me, the person who actually had jacks folded. Anyways, I do lose to queen jack, pocket jacks, all those hands. But, you know, I beat a bunch of other hands like ace queen and such. So just got to put more money into the middle. And I don't think I have an option to fold if he does go all in. I bet 2800 another very, very small sizing. And my opponent ends up folding. So I'll take this one down a pretty decent chunk for the first pot of the night. The next spot, the $200 straddle is on once again, and there's an early position limper of 200, and I peel ace king of hearts from the small blind. Another premium here from the blinds, gotta play this out of position, and I raise this one up to $1,000, as the other players left behind are pretty deep. We get the straddler and limper to call, so three ways to a flop of king jack eight to hearts. Yep, top pair, top kicker, nut flush draw, everything going for me. With the entire board locked up, essentially, I decided on a check. Given him out of position, trying to give my opponent some rope, but sadly, action checks around. Going to a turn which comes the six of diamonds, and I see this card as a complete brick. And given the passive action here from my opponents, I want to at least build some sort of a pot. I decide to bet out $1,600. It's about half the size of the pots. And now Jay Boogs takes his time to think things over. As you can see, his hand has improved, unbeknownst to me. And he decides to raise to $3,500. Pretty much close to a min raise here, and I'm a little bit confused. It's a small raise, and Jeremy doesn't have a whole lot of money behind this raise. And I'm not thinking I have the best hand right now, but I am certainly willing to gamble with such a strong hand with lots of equity. I go for it and play for stacks. I 3-bet shove, putting my opponent in. It's an all-in for just under 20000 give or take. And Jeremy takes his time. I think things over. Not super comfortable, but he does end up making the call and asks to run it twice. Of course, as you know, I'm always happy to run it however many times my opponent does. So I oblige and agree. I get shown the bad news, though, that Jeremy has two pair. But you know what? Ace King, I have lots of equity. Any ace, jack, eight, or heart will help improve me. And both rivers come and they're sick. I find a way to suck out on both rivers. First with the board pairing, second with the ace. And it feels bad, unfortunately, for Jeremy, who played his hand really, really well and got me to commit my stack as him being the favorite. But, you know, I guess I'm just a luckbox being able to find the outs here. So got to give a big thank you to Lauren, the dealer, for this one. And life's pretty good right now. Almost winning a $40,000 pot via two river suckouts. 
Let's keep this run good train going, huh? Action here starts with Nick raising under the gun to $300 with the $200 straddle off. Anyways, the early position player to my right makes the call. I have pocket eights. I call as well and casually. Cut off, small blind, big blind, all call. A casual six-way pot we go. Now, going to a flop six ways, which comes queen nine eight, bottom set. Yeah, that's... That's not a bad board for me. Although the board is really wet and dynamic, the player by right bets out $900 and $900 is simply not going to stand right now. On a dynamic board like this with lots of draws, lots of two pair combos, I am going to bump it up with a raise to $3,000. And with my $3,000 raise, this does end up isolating everyone. Back over to Big John who originally bet the $900. He looks like he has a hand ready for a battle here and he ends up making the call. So just trying to see a clean turn to potentially get it all in. The turn is the Six of Hearts. Pretty innocent looking card here. It does introduce a few more draws. So I think I'm probably going to bet big. That is before John leading out for $3,000. Very interesting now uh, here facing this raise as John committed more money in the middle. I think I just have an easy decision to just get it all. Who knows what John can have here at this point, but I have a set. It's a strong hand. I lose to a straight, but I always have outs to that. So I decided to put him all in and my opponent goes into the tank now. When he doesn't snap call, I'm definitely comfortable I have the best hand as I think any straight or set would, of course, snap call my all in. But after some time, John actually ends up folding, which is incredible because I end up losing out on like seven to $8,000 worth of value. So when John folds, got to give some credit to my opponent here for making a very disciplined laydown. So n still nice to win another pots, and this next hand gets a little out of line. So the 200, 400, 800, 1600 dollar straddle is on. Uh huh. All of a sudden, fireworks broke out for this one specific hand, and here I am peeling Ace Seven of Spades in the $200 straddle. Not the most fun spot to be in, but definitely a hand I will have to VPIP and play, so I decide to raise. Casually raise it up to 5300 because that's what happens when there's a $1,600 straddle on. Let's try to ride this variance roller coaster. Honestly, I'm hoping to just get everyone to fold here so I can take down all the money, but uh, of course the $1,600 straddle, Kennedy, he does not fold. He makes the call, so let's gamble here. Going to a flop and the pot's already massive. The flop comes jack, nine, deuce with one spade. I've whiffed, but maybe my opponent has whiffed as well. I also have some backdoor draws, I guess. So I bet really small compared to the size of the pot, $2,500. And Kennedy thinks it's a lot of BS and he raises to 6000 all right, um, this was not very fun for me. I guess it's only fair and justice that the $1,600 straddler wins this pot, but I'm, I'm going to be out of this one. This was not the most fun way to light $7,800 on fire, but that's how you do it. When a, when a $1,600 straddle is on, I fold and uh, basically almost destroy $8,000. So starting one of the last interesting hands of the night here, there is a call of $200 with the straddle on. I have pocket sevens. I think this is a perfect hand to raise. So I go for it and size up to 800. This gets the small blind straddler limper to call. And we're going to a flop, which comes seven, seven, three. What? I have to double check my cards because I really just flop quads here. And even more interesting, the small blind leads for 900. The straddler makes the call for 900. And what? Not sure what to do with this action. I have quads. I guess all I'm going to say is thank you for the money. I make the call too because it doesn't seem like either of these players will have anything too strong on this board. So we're off to a turn which comes the deuce of spades. Small blind bets again for 1600 and what's even crazier is the straddler calls again. What? I don't know what to do at this point because what strong hands can even be had on this board? Secondly, 
can my opponents ever have a hand that can call a raise? Maybe some sort of flush draw? Um, we're multi-way, so there's a chance that some of my opponents could be a little bit stronger here, but the issue is that my opponents have heaps behind, over $40,000. So I'm kind of hoping for some sort of cooler situation here. I really want this pot to get bigger, so with quads, I decided to raise. I make it $5,600 to go, and you can see, crap. My opponents fold. They didn't have a whole lot, as I suspected. Maybe I made the wrong decision this time, sadly. I'm not sure if I could have gotten any more, to be honest. But just kind of incredible to flop quads and see this incredible action. But this is going to wrap up the stream. And we play a few more hands post-stream. So let's straddle in here. I pick up pocket 10s. We're essentially playing 50, 100, 200 here with the 200 straddle on. There's a cutoff raise to $600, and I'm in the big blind, and I said to bump it up to $2,500. My opponent makes the call for $2,500 with about $50,000 behind, so stacks are building here. We're off to a flop of ace, 4, 4 to spades. This hand is not going to feel super comfortable with an ace high board, but I still think I have to bet to protect my hand, so I bet out $500. Yes. I bet a minuscule, minuscule amount. And for 500, my opponent makes the call. So we're going to a turn which comes a nine. So pretty safe card overall. And sticking to the theme, I think I can still get value from worst pocket pairs for a very small sizing and also just limit the size of the pot with the ace high board. So I bet out $700 here. <laughs> yes, it is incredibly small. And my opponent calls once again for 700. All right, still not loving the situation, but the river comes a jack. And I'm just trying to get to showdown as cheaply as possible. I bet 1,000. Yes, this is just <laughs> small, small, small betting here. Playing some small ball. And my opponent asks if I'm milking him before making the call. I show pocket tens and he shows ace eight. Looks like I was just milking myself. But nice hand to my opponent who hit the ace. And I guess I lost a small amount after the flop came. This next hand, Sneaky, gets a little wild. So I'm in the low jack with ace king off suits. And we're playing 5100 here. I raise it up to $300. Get the cutoff to make the call. And then the button player, Wesley, he three bets to 1500 Ace king off suit here. I think I have mixed feelings. Sometimes I can raise again. Sometimes I can just call. And against a very aggressive opponent, I decided to just make the call. Cutoff ends up folding, so we're going heads up to a flop of king nine deuce to hearts. Amazing flop with top pair, top kicker, along with the ace of hearts, so I'm not super worried about a flush. I checked it over to Wesley, and he bets 1,000. For 1,000, I'm never going anywhere here. Happy to make the call, and we're going to see a turn, which is a deuce. Another good looking card. I check it to my opponent and he bets again for 4,000 this time though, sizing up and it seems to be very polarizing. When he's polarizing, it means he's either representing a super strong hand or a very weak one. And it's really hard to have a very strong hand here at this point, considering I have ace king, less likely he'll have a king, pretty unlikely he'll have pocket kings. And I guess the only really other strong hand is pocket nines. So I'm not going to stop him if he's bluffing here. I decided to make the call once again. And we're off to a river, which comes a jack. Not loving it, but I don't think there are many hands that have improved now on the river. Play it this way, unless it's queen 10 of hearts or pocket jacks for some reason. Anyways, I check it over to him and my opponent bets 20,000. Massive over bet. And I guess also if my opponent could have king jack, so be it. Who cares? I am just going to have to call. I close my eyes, stick it in for a massive pot here on the river. And he says, good call. Just like that. Yes, post stream. Almost a $60,000 pot comes my way. And that's, that's it. Very, very casual. No one was even paying attention when this pot was happening on the table. So yeah, I just like pick up an extra $30,000 and add it to my stack. For one of the last interesting hands of the night in this action-packed night, I pick up ace-jack offsuit in the hijack, and I raise it up to 300. Play my left min raises to 600. Very interesting spots. The big one makes the call, and I decide to call as well. So we're going to a flop which comes ace-eight-five to clubs. 
hitting top pair here, always just running hot. Action checks to the player on my left, and he bets 1,200. And what's interesting is that now the big blind check raises to 4,000. Hmm. I am confused now because of the dynamics of the table so far. Of course, we're playing nine-handed. This might be a fold, but we're very much playing short-handed. So that means my top pair is a lot stronger than normal. And confused at this point, I'm up a decent chunk. There's been plenty of action. I give it. I call for $4,000, and the button calls as well. So now at this point, I don't love it. We're off to a turn, which comes the deuce of clubs. So the flush does get there. Big blind who check raised now starts with a check. And do I really think ace jack is going to be ahead here a lot of the time? Do I want to bet or check in this spot? I think sometimes I can just say YOLO and protect and bet out a decent top pair. Um, and that's what I decided to do because I don't know what's going on in this hand. I'm a little bit confused. So I bet $4,000 because maybe sometimes ace jack is good. But the button ends up folding. So that's good. Thinking my hand's good now. Big blind ends up actually calling this bet now. So when he check raises the flop, then check calls the turn. I'm confused now at this point, but ace jack, don't love it. We're off to a river now, which comes the seven of spades. Action's very quickly going to go check, check, because I don't want to put any more money in the middle. And the big line shows pocket fives for a set. I muck my cards as one pair will lose, and the button ends up actually showing ace queen when he folded. So I'm actually a huge donk for losing $8,000 that I didn't need to in this hand. This was quite the mistake, and I take a hit of a decent chunk of change here. Oh. Um, AKA my LA, new LA apartment. And if you're thinking, if it looks like I'm sitting just uh, on a mattress in a very empty room, it's because you are correct. Yeah, all I have is a mattress. Just moved into LA and uh, finally got a place here clearly have some things to do but poker takes priority and today went really really well it just ran really hot look i have some things oh going okay in my life um you know decorating the house is clearly not one of them that i have figured out but regardless let's go over the numbers i played this stream ran super hot for uh, almost seven hours flopped quads hit sets sucked out with top pair versus jeremy's two pair can't really ask for much more today. So I was in the game for $50,000 and I ended up cashing out for $115,775. Profit is high. Uh, probably one of my highest winning sessions ever. And it's crazy. So thank you so much for watching this one. I'm glad you guys stuck to the end. Um, tomorrow or the next video you're going to see, I am back at playing Hustler. So uh, in real time, I'm playing tomorrow. So follow me on Instagram if you want some real time updates. But um, yeah, in the next video you'll see, I will be at Hustler. It's gonna be a 25, 50, 100 game. It might get massive, like 200, 400, 800 straddles continuously. Cross my fingers, hope to run as pure as I did today. But thanks so much for sticking around. This was a sick video. I'm glad you guys watched. Thanks for the support. I'll see you next time. Peace.